So I wanted to show the way that I came up with to integrate the twist throttle with the front wheel drive throttle. Uh, basically, this is a little hall sensor. It puts out a zero to five volts depending on where it is and um, rotating. So it's connected to a gear on the twist throttle. And so now I can have full control over uh, like where I want it to start and stop in the range of the twist throttle. So I can make it almost like a wide open throttle switch, kind of like I had before, which didn't work that great. Or I could have it come on right in the beginning of the throttle or just be one to one pretty much. So it's really convenient for uh, experimenting with different um, all wheel drive kind of modes, I guess. So here I'm going to kind of tune it to, uh, I want it to hit the front wheel drive as soon as I twist the throttle, just even a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and full throttle. That's what I want to adjust. I'll just go that. Okay. Now you can see I barely have to twist the throttle and I'll get the front going. So now I'll start it up. So after I cartwheeled this thing down a hill and smashed all the plastics, uh, I got new ones obviously and uh, went ahead and just kind of cleaned everything up. This is about as clean as it's ever going to get. And then I reprinted all these 3D printed parts. Just, uh, just kind of cleaned it up. The old ones were getting a little warped from the sun. Made a new battery case there. Added another battery here in the frame there. So now it's a 10 amp hour and 59 volts. So that gives me a little lower voltage than I had it set up before, but uh, more capacity, so more range, less voltage sag, just uh, runs cooler, it'll never overheat at this voltage because it's more efficient so just all around more usable and uh, to continue on from another video I left off talking about how, what to do about this chain <laughs> I just ended up just throwing it back on there and it's a little misaligned but it works fine since you got these guides kind of keeping it um, tight around the sprockets and yeah it might wear a little more prematurely but for as much as I ride this thing it's not a problem and works just fine a lot less work than the, the other options so that's how I solved that just didn't do anything <laughs> Swing arm is looking factory fresh. Check out my other video for how I widened that to fit this ATV wheel, custom made. What's that switch for? Yep, it's even got brake lights, blinkers, headlights. Just need the plate. So for those who have been following along in my other videos, I kind of been talking about 
integrating the throttles. So here's my latest solution. I 3D printed all these parts here. Um, so this is the little Hall effect sensor. Depending on the position, it sends back a zero to five volts to the cycle analyst computer. So that gives me full control of um, the uh, throttle curve or bias. I could set it up in here so I can make a one to one or have it come on the front wheel drive come on right away or later or anywhere in between. So I'm going to be messing around with that a little bit, seeing what works best because uh, the thumb throttle I had before was just kind of. Yeah, it worked, but it just wasn't very ergonomic and just kind of awkward when you when you're using the front wheel drive in a sketchy situation. It's just kind of feels like you're losing control, having to move your thumb off and not just hang on like that. More control. So now I flip that mystery switch. And it glows. You ain't gonna miss me coming. <laughs> 